Hello, welcome to the Ascent of Mount Carmel YouTube channel. In this channel we discuss the book Ascent of Mount Carmel by St. John of the Cross and today we're on the 21st chapter of the second book. As we've noted in previous installments, while we're in the contemplative state we should be waiting in silence for God and we shouldn't be breaking our silence and ever pray for supernatural knowledge. Now this is a fairly long chapter but it can be summed up by two points. The first is that Sometimes God answers these prayers for information or knowledge, but such prayers are disappointing to him. And the second point is, when prayers for information or knowledge are answered, most of the time it's the devil and not God who's communicating to us. Since this is a fairly long chapter, we're going to split this up into two installments, dealing with one point at a time. Many people assume that because God occasionally answers prayers to supernaturally attain knowledge, to understand the universe, to understand the unknowable, to have visions, or to learn of future events, then they assume that these sorts of prayers must be good things and are pleasing to God because he's answering them, but God is actually offended and angry when we pray in this manner. God created us with reasonable and natural limits. The desire to pass beyond them is not lawful. It's against the law. It was against the law. But what the mama saw, it was against the law. To seek to attain knowledge of supernatural things by supernatural means is to go beyond these limits. It's not lawful, and God is offended by everything that is unlawful. And the serpent said to the woman, In that day, soever you shall eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So you see, to pray to supernaturally obtain unknowable knowledge is to echo the very first sin of disobedience and pride. People who pray to know the unknowable do so out of ignorance of the ways of God, and these people meddle with what by our very nature we can't attain. Though angered by this, God allows them to act foolishly. King Akaz was very well aware of this. Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, either unto the depth of hell or unto the height above. But Akaz said, I will not ask, and I will not tempt the Lord. In St. John's opinion, the desire to know things by supernatural means is at least the venial sin. And this is the case no matter how good the goals of the person praying might be. According to St. John, if the spiritual director instructs somebody to pray for such things, then the spiritual director also sins. But why does God sometimes answer these prayers? Well, let's look at an example. Let's say you take your family out to a nice restaurant and you have your thoughts on ordering a nice red juicy steak. And you assume that your family's going to order something nice off the menu as well, but your son announces that he wants the mac and cheese. And you can explain to him that, well, a steak is better food, but you know it's no use. Your son's heart is set on the mac and cheese, and that's the only thing that's going to please him. And he'd rather eat it than anything else on the menu. So you just shrug your shoulders and regrettably allow him to order that mac and cheese because you know that if you ordered a mistake, you'd only pick at it and complain and just be miserable. In the same way, God gives some people what might not be best for them, but he gives it because that's the only thing that they want or understand at that particular point in time. God grants them this because they're unable to partake of the much more solid food of the trials of the cross, which God would truly prefer us to choose more than anything else. And God treated the Israelites in the same way. When they asked him for a king, he gave them one, but he did so reluctantly because it wasn't good for them. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken to the voice of the people in all that they say to thee, for they have not rejected thee, but me that I should not reign over them. God sometimes answers these prayers because he knows that the person making them is weak and uninformed and he doesn't want that person to become frustrated and go backward. Or perhaps God doesn't want the person to fret and think that God is angry with him. Or perhaps the person is good and sincere and doesn't realize that he shouldn't be making such requests so God cuts him some slack. Or perhaps God has other reasons based on the specific person. Nonetheless, if God does answer these prayers, it isn't because he's pleased by them. It's because he gives to each individual in a manner that's best suited for that individual. 
That is a little bit like a well from which everyone draws water according to the vessel that they bring with them. Sometimes the soul is allowed to draw by extraordinary means, and it is valid, but this doesn't mean that it's licit to draw by such methods. And let me explain the difference between valid and licit. Let's say a sign is hung over the wall that says, Private property, keep out. And a person might break the law and obtain water from it anyways. Well, the water collection was valid. It happened, the person has the water. However, it was done in an illicit manner. It was illegal. Something may be valid, but illicit. God may tolerate and permit illicit prayers when, how, and to whom he desires. And God may choose whatever reason he might have. For an example of God answering prayers for supernatural knowledge but still being angered by them, we can look to King Saul. When Saul begged that the deceased prophet Samuel might speak to him, Samuel did appear, but God was angry with the request and Samuel rebuked Saul. Why hast thou disturbed my rest that I should be brought up? When the Israelites already had the heavenly food manna, they instead prayed for meat. So God gave them what they asked for, but he was really angry nonetheless, and he punished them. As yet their meat was in their mouth, and the wrath of God came upon them. In the book of Numbers, King Balak sent for Balaam. God instructed Balaam not to go, but Balaam continued to ask God to let him go, so God reluctantly allowed it. But while Balaam was en route to see Balak, an angel with a sword appeared to him and blocked his way and said, Thy way is perverse and contrary to me. In the book of Ezekiel, we read about people who were motivated by curiosity and vanity to try to gain knowledge directly from God. For every man in the house of Israel, if he separate himself from me and come to the prophet to inquire of me by him, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. But I will set my face against that man, and I will make him an example and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installment. We'll be back again within a week with another one, and we're going to finish up chapter 21. But in the meantime, please pray for the church. It's against the law. It was against the law. Oh, what the mama saw. It was against the law.